morning. Thank you guys so very much for joining us this morning. It's an honor to be part of this magical team that is putting together a brand new parade for the Magic Kingdom. Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade is truly a celebration of Fantasyland. It features all of the classic Disney stories and characters from Peter Pan to Sleeping Beauty to Tangled and Brave to name a few. You guys are in for a real treat this morning. You're going to see, like I said, some of Marina Rada's stunning designs. This parade, uh, which debuts next month, gulp, um, just we're all so very excited about it, uh, about bringing this brand new state-of-the-art parade into the Magic Kingdom. It features seven unique units, nine fantastic spectacular floats, brand new costumes, a new soundtrack and theme song, some of the most amazing performers that I've ever worked with are just going to rock the parade route in the Magic Kingdom. And again, I'm just really excited to be uh, part of this uh, magical team. So, without further ado, because it's really about fashion week and tying into all things Bryant Park, and we're going to do it in a Disney magical way, it is my pleasure to introduce customer Walt Disney Parks and Resorts, Jensen Dupuy. Doing love. So well, I'm so excited to show off Marina's designs. Thank you all for being here. We're really excited about what you're about to see. Absolutely. So Marina Rada, before we begin uh, the sneak peek at all of her beautiful designs, Marina Rada continues to expand her portfolio with partnering uh, with the Walt Disney Company. She's created some beautiful designs for the Disneyland Resort, Tokyo Disney Resort, as well as Hong Kong uh, Disneyland. And then we're in for a real treat. Uh, she's just been a wonderful partner and collaborator and putting out these gorgeous designs that I know you guys are going to get a treat out of. Some of you are going to probably say, can I buy it off the runway this morning? So that said, I think it's time to begin the fashion show. You ready? Let's do it. Okay. Festival of Fantasy Parade begins with the Princess Garden Unit. This gorgeous opening unit is truly a celebration of Disney royalty. The float actually totals over 54 feet in length. It will feature Belle and Beast, Cinderella and Prince Charming, Tiana and Naveen, and as Carol mentioned earlier, you guys are in for a real treat. Hot off the press, we will be uh, debuting and showcasing Elsa and Anna from the hit animated film Frozen. They will be making their debut as part of the opening Princess Garden unit. What you're seeing here is our opening Swan Court couples. Randy, a little fun fact about these costumes, there are no real feathers on our Swan Court costumes. All are handmade with sheer fabric. The female silhouette has a swan hugging her bodice, floating on water. We can give them some applause. It's gorgeous. You saw a little sneak peek of some of the choreography there as well. Uh, they're going to be just creating a brand new style of choreography out there to showcase these beautiful designs by Marina Rada. And again, just a gorgeous silhouette. They flow. They almost the lady's dress almost feels like a mini float out there, wouldn't you say, Jansen? They're just Absolutely. gorgeous. Absolutely, there are thousands of crystals on her costume right now. Awesome. Thank you again. That is our opening unit, the Princess Garden unit. We then transition into all things Rapunzel and Flynn in the world of Tangled. This second float is over 29 feet tall, 35 feet in length. I promise they're getting along. These are two of our swing thugs that are part of this amazing float. This float is really a, uh, a representation, a long ship that resembles the snuggly duckling tavern from the film. Rapunzel will be featured at the front of the float, should be joined by Flynn. And what's really cool about this float, ladies and gentlemen, is just the kinetic energy on this with the swinging pendulums. They're on these giant weapons that will swing out over the float. And these are two of our swing thugs that I would not want to meet in the back alley. 
Randy, they do look quite rugged. However, there was a lot of work put into these costumes. There are 28 different fabrics on each costume. Our thug here with the vest on has 75 different diamonds on his vest. While they do look a little warm and fuzzy with their pelts thrown over their shoulders, most of this faux fur is sewn onto mesh to keep our performers cool. I love them. Do you think I could pull that off? Absolutely. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, anyway, they are also joined uh, dancing on the street in front of the float by our gorgeous Floral Maiden dancers. You're seeing one of, of our four that will be out there on the street. They'll be joined also by an oversized mind thug, Ulf, from the film. Randy, the ribbons on her dress are all different colors for each maiden. The flowers are handmade out of the ribbons. If you look closely, you might see a drop of dew. I have to say, I mean, I love all the designs that Marina and you and the rest of the beautiful team have created for this parade, but just the movement and playfulness of these skirts, it's, it really does feel like a mini maypole out there. Yes, that's uh, Marina's inspiration for the dress was a maypole. Awesome. All right, thank you so much. How about a round of applause for the world of Tangled? From Tangled, we transition into and actually traverse under the water, all things under the sea, with Ariel and many of her sea creature friends. I'm going to have our lionfish hold center stage there as I share a little bit of info about our beautiful float here. You're able to see a tangible representation of the mermaid float there. Off to my left, Ariel will be showcased up atop this giant clamshell. Um, she'll be joined by Founder and of course Sebastian and of course many of her sea creature friends, one of them being our lionfish. Randy, the lionfish costume is created with all custom printed fabrics. All these vibrant colors that you see were designed by Marina and printed by our creative costuming team. It's a lot of drama. It's a lot of drama, but actually those wings weigh less than five pounds. Wow. And I meant drama in a good way. I'm all about, you know, Marina and you and the rest of the team have put a lot of just beautiful show pieces out there on the street. I think the cosmetology really makes this one. Absolutely. Got to tip our hat to the cosmetology team here as well. Another one of our wonderful sea creatures as part of the mermaid unit is Seashell Girl. She'll be also dancing on the front of the float uh, on the street, joined by our lionfish. And another surprise around the corner after Seashell Girl. But again, I just love the playfulness and just the wonderful energy that's part of this costume. Lots of energy in this costume, lots of fabric. There are over 30 yards of fabric in this costume alone. Her conch shell headpiece was actually grown in the 3D printer, done by our materials engineers here at Walt Disney World. Sorry, I just have to say this. Lady Gaga has nothing on this conch shell headpiece. Right? Agreed. It's gorgeous. I love it. I mean, these are one of a kind designs that have never been seen before in a Disney park. And that said, here is another one our seahorse male performer who is rocking it out in this really fun, just the kinetic energy on this costume is so much fun. I think um, our guests that will be uh, enjoying this creative magic kingdom are going to get a real kick out of playing with the seahorse on the parade rock. Randy, it was really a challenge to make a costume with moving parts. We're, we're soft goods people, and it was a fun challenge. As you can see, they rotate 360 degrees. There will be two seahorse performers on the parade route, and each seahorse is a different color. Give us a little bit of fun. They're really great. What I also admire about Marina and the rest of the team is that everyone works in such a collaborative spirit. So you see just the gorgeous designs here that are taking the runway, but just the colors, how they tie into the float. So everything works as a cohesive unit, from the float, to the costumes, to cosmetology, to the music. So let's give a round of applause to our cast from Mermaid. From Mermaid, we are going to fly to Neverland. We're going to have our Lost Boys hang center there as I share some really fun, uh, fun facts in regard to our Peter Pan float that you're seeing center stage there. The Jolly Roger ship high atop the giant rainbow uh, will feature Peter Pan and Wendy. You're seeing nothing right now, gang. Right now, the float is just uh, in static mode. It actually rocks forward and back. On the anchor will be Captain Hook. 
Um, on the front of the float, in front of Skull Rock, will be our Lost Boys that you see right here. There's some of my favorite costumes, Jansen, if you wouldn't mind sharing. Brandy, I love these because they're so colorful. There's some custom embroidery on them, lots of rainbow flair. So it reflects that rainbow on the float. Like you said, cohesiveness with every piece, every element. The boys have patches, just looks like they threw their looks together in Neverland. Yeah, I have to say, when uh, we first uh, sat down to talk about these costumes, it was how do we tip our hat, pay homage to the classic animated film Peter Pan, but yet give it a relevant, fresh twist. So what I love about this, I'm so excited I'm dropping my cards, is that it also is kind of ties into all things Newsies, which just has a really fun, roustabout energy. Um, again, the kinetic energy on this float mixed with the wonderful choreography here with our lost boys. I know our guests are going to get a real treat out of it. They're going to think of those happy thoughts and wish that they could all fly. Thank you, lost boys. Follow the leader. <laughs> From there, we then transition into Brave. This will feature Merida and all of her female empowerment glory atop this oversized bagpipe float. Um, her brothers will be represented on the float as well in fair form. And they are joined by eight Highland dancers. I kid you not, ladies and gentlemen, the choreography for this unit and the costumes I know is going to knock people's Mickey ears off on Main Street. It's just really fun. I agree, Randy. The choreography is amazing. These costumes are inspired by the green hills of Scotland. There are actually four different clans of plaid that are represented. So each of our four couples will have a different custom print plaid, different colors on their costumes. And once you see the float, you'll notice there's a nod to the tartan on the float. Once again, all things cohesive. Very cohesive, and I, I just know I could not pull off the kilt, so I'm jealous. I don't know. Andy, I think you could work that out. It's awesome. Just beautiful costumes and again, just the wonderful playfulness and movement of the choreography mixed with these gorgeous costumes that just flow and have such a playful energy out there on the street. Um, I know uh, uh, our guests, young and old, are going to really celebrate Brave and Merida and all of her glory. Thank you so much. A round of applause for Brave. Well, sometimes a parade or a celebration gets crashed by some evilness, and I mean that in a good way. We are going to now transition into all things Sleeping Beauty unit. This float, or as you, should I say creature, is uh, the Maleficent Dragon that was released uh, to the press a couple weeks ago. One of my favorite floats in the entire Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade. It really is a marvel with this giant Maleficent Dragon that is designed in steampunk style. It has such a really cool kinetic energy to it. The wings flap, the neck, the head moves. It breathes fire, smoke. Um, and then they're joined by, again, it's about creating an extension of that story out on the street. And what you're seeing here is one of our thorn stilt walkers. He's pretty menacing, if I do say so myself. However, the costume is not. All the thorn bramble that you see is foam covered in fabric. All of those thorns, those thorns are hand sculpted, hand painted, and airbrushed. What's really cool about the thorn stilts, uh, as I mentioned earlier, about just partnering with the uh, art designer for the floats along with Marina and the team is how can the float extend out, uh, out onto the street? And what's so cool is that Prince Philip will be out there battling and fighting the good fight to save his true love uh, through the thorn stilts and one of our raven dancers that you see here. There's actually two that are part of this unit, but we're giving you a sneak peek of one of our raven dancers. Now the raven is another moving parts costume. Those wings that you see have two points of articulation. They're on a pulley system. So that was a challenge for us at Creative, trying to figure out how to integrate moving parts with soft goods. These fabrics are once again custom printed, and much like the seashell conch headpiece, his beak was also grown in a 3D printer, also developed here at Walt Disney World. I love these costumes. I just love them so very much. Just they are wicked. Check out the wingspan. What did you say, 15? 12, 12 feet. 12 feet. 12 foot just wingspan. Amazing. 
I love it. So again, Prince Philip is fighting the good fight against these cronies, if you will, along with the Maleficent Dragon that actually is 14 feet wide, the float itself, 53 feet long, and over 26 feet tall. So just the scale and the drama of this unit in particular is going to be amazing. How about a round of applause for a little teaser of just what is in store with the Sleeping Beauty unit. As we all know, Goodness always prevails in regard to evilness, so we transition into our finale unit. All three floats combined in this unit combined over 90 feet in length. Part of the opening part of the finale unit really is, as I said earlier, it's a celebration of Fantasyland. All of those iconic characters that will burst out onto the parade route in the Magic Kingdom. One of our dancers here is our Bubbles Girl. Ready, the Bubble Bow is about three feet by five feet. 22 rainbow bubbles are in there, but it still weighs less than five pounds. Is the, I just one question, is the, the hair edible? Just, the hair no? is not edible, although it does look like and is inspired by cotton candy. It does, again, it just captures the storybook circus element, Fantasia, just all of that whimsical playfulness that is a part of this finale unit. Bubbles Girl, you're working it. I love it. She's also joined by Cha-Cha Bingo Girl, as we refer to her. She is also part of our finale unit. The characters that are part of this finale unit, our guests are gonna be in for a paparazzi just frenzy, trying to capture all of the wonderful characters that are out there on the street, from Snow White, the Seven Dwarfs, Alice, Mad Hatter, White Rabbit, Pinocchio, Jiminy Cricket, and of course, many of our VIP characters, as we refer to them, Mickey and Minnie, and we'll have Goofy, and Chippendale, Pluto, Donald, and Daisy, all in brand new overdressings that will be uh, tipping their hat to the new Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade. So Cha-Cha Bingo Girl, show us that strut. While she struts that skirt, um, I'll let you know this skirt is, of course, inspired by a circus tent, the top of her costume inspired by Pinocchio, which will be along with her, wig I want to bring your attention to has 148 yards of horse hair in it. Quite a lot of work went into that. Well, these costumes as well, just the playfulness and just a simple walk, ladies and gentlemen, that you're seeing there, the playfulness and the scale. When you put all four girls out there on the street, in addition to the rest of the Disney characters and the float themselves, it's just going to be a wonderful punctuation mark as part of our finale unit with the Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade. So I say that we need to bring out all of our wonderful creations as part of Marina Rada's portfolio. Please put our hands together for some of the cast of Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade. Fantastic job, cast. Thank you so very much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate it. Job. You can give him some more love, eh? Wonderful job. Thanks again for joining us this morning. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys next month on the streets of the Magic Kingdom when you check out the Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade. Thank you, guys.